What's going on, this is Johnny, and welcome to the Marvel's Avengers Full War Table Gameplay Reveal Event Reaction. Okay, um, listen, this is a game that's been on my radar for a long time, and I'm not sure how I feel about it yet. So hopefully this 25-minute gameplay is going to actually do something for me, because for me, and I, actually among other people, the fighting sequences and the fighting in general just look stale, and it looks like it's going to get boring fast, and I'm just throwing it out there, man. Spider-Man, whoa. This game, maybe. I'm not sure yet. So sit back, relax, get your snacks, because we about to watch some gameplay videos. Duh. Let's go. When I was young, I found an orphaned wolf cub in the forest behind our farm. I felt if I could instill rules, the proper boundaries, I could harness the raw power of that beast. Okay. A few months later, while hunting, the adolescent cub turned on me. We're fixing the damage the Avengers did all those years ago. Inhumans are sick. Unlimited power, that's dangerous. It's lethal. You are lucky to be alive. Come on, Kamala. Let AIM help you. I'll take my chances. What if the Avengers were set up? I think you should see for yourself. Couldn't Mr. Stark help us with this? Hi, I'm sorry. Who are you? Uh, Kamala? This better be good. He totally locked Captain Maria from and then he tried to jack the Chimera. Son of a... Have you all completely lost your senses? What? Where were you while the world went to hell? This is our fault. All of ours. You really think the world is better without us? Yes. See, it's always been your problem. Running from who you are, what you are. I am warning you. This is exactly what Tarleton wants! Ooh! Okay, this actually looks pretty good. This just got a whole lot weirder. So far, it looks really good. What's up, Marvel fans? My name's Casey Lynch, and I'm editorial director at Crystal Dynamics. Marvel's Avengers War Table is your direct source for all things Marvel's Avengers. We've got a great show lined up. With new trailers, new details on one of our main villains, MODOK, and Modoc. advanced idea mechanics. And we'll take a first look at co-op and war zones. All right. If you've ever thought, what is this game? Or how does it work? Then this is the show for you. Okay. Let's get into it, starting with a story trailer. In the aftermath of A-Day, everything changed. You so-called heroes transformed San Francisco into an infectious, gas-filled quarantine zone. You unleash disease, powerful beings that wreak havoc throughout our nation. So I ask you again, Dr. Banner, do the Avengers pose a danger to society? Yes. I can promise you this. I will use this second chance to make you safe. AIM will find a cure for the inhuman disease. As a founding member of tech giant Advanced Idea Mechanics, or AIM, George Tarleton dreamt of a world made better through science. But even as AIM promises a cure to end the inhuman infection, and the revolutionary Adaptoid Project offers a world protected by science, Tarleton, a victim of a -Day himself, uses AIM's technological might and the public's fear of inhumans to convince the world that the superpowered are uncontrollable and cannot be trusted. Okay. His deranged obsession drives him to become MODOK, mental organism designed only for killing. 
Sounds promising. We knew we needed someone who had the muscle and mental capacity to become an Avengers level threat. We also wanted a new face for modern Avengers fans. Uh, big face. Big but face. comic fans know MODOK is anything but new. His origin in Marvel lore dates back more than 50 years to October of 1967 in Tales of Suspense. Now, with Ames' drive to manipulate public fear and his ability to control machines with his mind, Tarleton and Aim are the most sophisticated threat the Avengers have ever faced. Okay, so so far, I'm kind of already in. This is, this is, this is kind of good, actually. I like this. Um, I haven't heard of Modoc or what the hell his name was. So that right there kind of already has my attention because usually you just kind of hear of like the basic people. Um, and I kind of, like, I know Spider-Man's villains. I know all the other villains. So Modoc, I, I'm kind of in. I'm kind of in. This is because I'm already five minutes in. I'm kind of in. I mean, I'm gonna get it regardless. It's gonna be a game I'm gonna get, and we're doing a full let's play of it. But I'm kind of in. Let's get back to it. I'm, but a I'm done. Fan I'm in. Girl named Kamala Khan doesn't trust Aim. In fact, she's convinced that Aim is experimenting on her fellow Inhumans under the guise of finding a cure. And she believes George Tarleton was behind the plot to discredit the Avengers. And she has proof. As you pick up the trail of the long disbanded Avengers, you'll advance the story of the single player campaign, unlocking more and more hero specific missions. We know you've been asking for new gameplay that's not from A Day. We hear you. So here's a playthrough of part of a new Thor hero mission called Once an Avenger. Thor? <laughs> Okay. You got my attention now. I'm all the way in. Iron Man. This is kind of what I'm, what I'm looking for. AIM experience in Manhattan witnessing the return of the Avengers, but they, they appear to be attacking the city. Keep rolling, keep rolling. She got his hammer. Is it any coincidence that this attack comes on the very day that AIM is supposed to unveil their promising new adaptoid program? Uh, I thought I'd hit the guy, to be honest. Oh, this is sick. You're welcome. Dude, the voice actor for Thor is fire. I, I, I like him already. <laughs> Okay. Okay, here we go. Wait, is that Thor? This right here is gonna make or break me. The story is compelling. I like it so far. The villains are cool. Everything is super, like, you know, marvel-y. You know, super bright. And um, all the powers look cool. Et cetera, et cetera. But the gameplay itself has to really wow me here. Because I'm like with everybody else that I've seen comment-wise that the... the the fighting and stuff just looks like it's gonna get stale pretty quick, and I, it might be because they haven't really like released anything or like showed anything for the new stuff. But this is gonna be it. So let's get ahead and get into it. Holy crap, Thor! Where the hell did you come from? I was serving the commoners when it started raining bolts of metal from the skies. It is unbelievably good to see you. Eh, a bit dramatic, don't you think? It doesn't matter. He's here now. Okay. So far, they just seem like. You did what you were supposed to do, Thor. You gave up your power. You should have stayed forgotten. Never, when mortals are in peril. Where do you hide, Doctor? Can you not face me? Look around. I'm everywhere. So far, I'm 50-50. It just reminds me of Skyrim. Not in the sense of, like... Not in the sense of, like... It's, like, that game. I'm just saying in a sense of it just seems like you're just slashing at nothing. Like, you're not really hitting anything. It doesn't seem like 
like there's like a impact to it. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Like it just feels like you're just hitting like a bag of potatoes. Like it doesn't, I don't know how to explain it. It's just what it feels like to me. See, it just like, I don't know how to explain it. Just like old times. Aim drop ships inbound. I see them. Focus on those mechs. Kamala, you okay? Yeah. It looks super pretty though. You got this. Like, like so far, like it looks like they nailed what they were going for. So I, I applauded on them, but I just, I don't know, it just feels like, I don't know how to explain it. Go Hulk, go. You killed Captain America Thor. Who else will fall before your hammer? Uh, silence! See, it just doesn't... I don't know how to explain it. It, like... It's not... Satisfying. That's the kind. That's the word I'm gonna go for. It doesn't seem satisfying when you hit somebody. You know what I'm saying? Like it doesn't seem like it's. I don't know. I'm not hating on it by any means. I'm just saying like it doesn't seem satisfying. It might be different when you're playing it. You know. Regardless, I'm still gonna get it. I just wanna. I don't know. I, 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 I'm just. Ah. Okay, that was cool. Iron Man always comes in on some cool shit. Always. I just feel like this whole thing is gonna get stale quick. To be honest, like I'm already bored and I'm already watching this. This is how it is to me. I don't know if anyone else goes the same way, but I can handle the large one myself. I'm gonna say this one thing really quick. I feel like if this game did not have the Marvel's tag on it, this thing would sell not good. And that's just my opinion. I get that it has different opinions out here, but I just feel like if they took the Marvels away and it was just like a, their own superhero type thing or something like that, it just wouldn't do well, personally. It just seems like a... <clears throat> I think this game would have done better if it was like an MMO. You get if that makes sense? Like MMOs, they don't really have anything too crazy going for them. There's just so much content that it kind of goes well. And you can kind of push away the sides, some of the, the staleness and things like that. So I think this would have been very, very good for an MMO. I'm not sure how they, if they would do it, yada, yada. But that's just my opinion. So I would like to know if anyone else feels the same way. I don't know. Talk about it in the comments. I'm here, for have a, I'm here to have a conversation. I'm not trying to tell you that my way of thinking is where the hell it's at. I'm just saying you don't have to. that's where I'm at right now.
The powers are cool. We're also so many missions into the actual campaign too, so there's really no impact story-wise yet. So that could be the reason why I'm having <clears throat> terrible opinions, I guess you could say. Okay. It looks it looks it looks like a fun time, but also not a fun time. Like I'm not sure where I'm at. It's a yet. great example of a hero mission. A single player campaign experience focusing on a specific playable character. Hero missions give us a chance to tell more of each hero's story and showcase the variety and depth of our hero designs. Let's take a quick look at how Thor plays. With the game's combat systems, players can string together combos of heavy and light attacks or hold for signature attacks. Combat versatility is one of Thor's strengths. From making use of Mjolnir to pin enemies from a distance or bringing the sky down on his foes. In addition to core combat moves, the God of Thunder has a wide variety of skills to unlock that give him access to okay. classic moves. That's what I'm looking for. There's like some sort of RPG-ness to it. Okay. So everything I just said, just take it back. Because I didn't know that they, they were going this route with it. I thought they were just going to go with, like, just, here's a basic attack, here's this attack, here's that attack, you put it together, you can screw it together, and it's a little bit different. But they're actually, like, kind of weaving things together, and I can kind of get around that. So, it, I don't think, it, it might not be as bad as I'm thinking it is. This is one of our favorites, manual targeting. We largely drew our influence from writer Jason Aaron's run on the Mighty Thor comic. Manual targeting allows you to quickly mark your enemies for bullseyes with Mjolnir, and one by one, you can mark them and knock them down as Mjolnir comes back to you. Follow that up with a powerful ground pound, and you've got a mighty combo. Manual targeting is a great ranged attack, but if up close and personal is more your style, go with the hammer spin or Mjolnir cycle. Okay. All right. Th that's what I like to see. Heroes have three special heroic moves. Assault. What the? Ultimate. And support. When designing our heroics. Oh, hell yeah. The signature moves from the comics and movies that we've always wanted to play. The assault heroic. Now we're talking. Fastest, and in some cases, you can store multiple charges to use strategically as a part of your combos. You can perform these after charging. Your Yo, this chick right here is normal cool. Attacks. For instance, Natasha's Assault Heroic is Widow's Bite, which is an electroshock projectile move you might recognize. You can see Nat using it right here. Each hero also has a unique support heroic that's designed to enhance co-op and team play. For example, Thor's support, Warrior's Fury, lets him channel the power of the gods to supercharge his Odin Force and grants a period of invulnerability for nearby team members. You can see this in action when Iron Man gets the buff as he flies through Thor's support. Ultimates take longer to charge, but they're definitely worth the wait. They have more screen clearing power, Hell yeah. and some even have residual effects, like Thor's Bifrost Ultimate. Thor's ultimate heroic channels the power of the Nine Realms, and his Bifrost taps into Muspelheim to bypass unbreakable shields, allowing Thor to use the power of the Bifrost Bridge to do maximum damage. Okay. We know everyone plays differently. So now we we're talking. Melee, ranged, aerial, and ground combat skills to tailor your hero to your playstyle. I like As your this. Heroes earn experience. Now they gain access to new skills. Skill points allow you to unlock new moves, combos, and even new versions of attacks. As you build up your heroes, you begin attack, to see how attacks, unlocking rage. and mastering the separate core skills offers a ton of depth and variety on its own for every hero. And that's before gear, perks, 
artifacts, and any kind of later game Whoa. progression. So why is all of this important? Because it means you're holy Thor shit, with dude. I didn't know this is the. I, I didn't. I had no idea. I had no idea this is gonna be this freaking big. What the hell? Proficient protection grip. Power boost available. Proficient protection grip. 11 proficiency. 22 power. Proficient protection. 21%. Chance range power attacks grant a defense buff. Requires range power attack ability. Electric wraps. Range power attacks deal bonus shock damage on top of an in it or in I and in I in in it innate. Sorry, words. Innate shock damage. Heavyweight breaker. 21% increased damage from power attacks. What the fuck? Dude, I didn't know they were doing this stuff with this. I thought, oh my god, man. If I knew all this, I would have said nothing before this. And if I just said a little bit before this, just disregard it. Take it, crumble up, throw in the trash. Because this is what I'm liking to see. We'll play differently than my Thor. And my Hulk will play different than yours. Interesting. Another way to customize your heroes is with gear. We've previously talked about the different rarities and how perks will give you powerful modifiers for even more customization. Some perks okay. apply special damage like plasma or gamma, or cause status effects like shrink, which will shrink enemies and reduce damage and defense. What? You can see Iron Man using gamma gear in this shot, and eagle-eyed fans probably noticed his laser sweep was green instead of red. Nope, that wasn't a bug. When you have Gamma Gear equipped, it grants a bonus damage modifier and changes the emissive color of your attack. And voila, green lasers. Huh. Okay. We know that if you look good, you'll play good. The Crystal team has really enjoyed creating all new outfits for these heroes and drawing from Marvel's 80 year history to bring so many classic outfits to the game. Each hero has dozens of outfits drawn from some of the most recognizable eras and story arcs. You can earn them over the course of the story campaign by completing missions and deciphering patterns. There's Iron Man suit from the 2014 Original Sin storyline. Hell yeah. Or Donald Blake, which is a nod to an alias of Thor's who first appeared in 1962's Journey into Mystery issue 83. Or Tony's Stark Tech outfit that was inspired by the Bleeding Edge armor that first appeared in Invincible Iron Man number 25 in 2010. While there are a ton of outfits you'll earn just by playing, some will require completing iconic mission chains to earn each hero's iconic outfit. And some outfits will only be available in our online marketplace. Mm. You can even customize your attitude mm. and let out don't your like that. Hulk with the right emote. I don't like that. I don't think that's canon. Don't do that to me. Those are just some of the ways you'll be able to build and spec out your heroes. Okay, I think it's time for another trailer. This one gives us a first look at how all that customization is especially fun when you play together. This is co-op and war zones. Okay, now we're talking. Hey, aim is firing on the air force. These adaptoids of his, they harvest their powers through the torture of these inhumans. Georgie boy is gearing up for war. Programmable power under our control. No more heroes. Entire world is in terrible danger. There better be a lot of missions. Time is here. I could pull some strings to spruce up the armory. Get play ourselves some new toys to play with. Dangerous ones. I'm picking up something in the atmosphere. A derivative of Terrigen. I'm here. Who needs their ass kicked? The very end brings dark magic. <laughs> Get this bird in the air before aim comes looking. You build a helicarrier. Jarvis is unencrypting the schematics, and we'll get our tech heads on new gear ASAP. Same little resistant. Look at all this. Which nation state is aim planning to go to war with? Heroes are people, and people can be corrupted. Don't stop them, it's just one more thing to regret on my deathbed. Times like this, when it all seems hopeless, that's when we've got to stand strong. You want to 
See powers? Here we go. Time for heroes. It's over. You don't get to decide who lives or dies. I'm actually excited now. Okay. So far, we've talked about the story, hero missions, and customization. Now, let's talk about war zones. War zone. War zones are missions which you can play with up to a total of four players or solo with an AI companion team made up of your unlocked and leveled heroes. Whether playing hero missions or war zones, you always make forward progress with your heroes. Okay. On your helicarrier, you'll use the war table to launch missions with a variety of objectives and challenges. As you saw in the co-op trailer, each mission is grounded in story. So whether you're in the campaign or war zones, you're always working together to stop aim and rebuild the resistance. You get missions from Jarvis, Maria Hill, Hank Pym, and more characters from Marvel history. Once you pick your mission, you'll board the Quinjet where you can match make, switch heroes, choose your loadout, and of course, pick the right look and attitude for the job. As you start playing missions across the globe, you'll realize AIM has entrenched themselves in cities and remote locations alike, all in the name of research. War zones range from wide open yeah. spaces designed for exploration and team traversal to dense interiors with a variety of objective based challenges, boss fights, and rewards. Cool. Here's a mission we saw on the co op trailer called To Tame a Titan, where we can see some team play. There's this cool shot of Iron Man, but you may have missed Kamala and Hulk performing a team finisher on that poor guy back there. When you max out some larger enemies' stun meter, two heroes can come together to perform a team finisher, 37. which gives you a chance to take them down What's much the max faster. Level? Teamwork makes the dream work. Living the hero life is all about growth, getting stronger and better equipped to play smarter, and there are plenty of upgrades to help you do just that. As you progress through the campaign, you'll also be rebuilding and upgrading the Chimera, your helicarrier, which is your own flying base. The Resistance is a group who have banded together in the five years since A-Day. Some are inhuman and have powers. Some are former S.H.I.E.L.D. agents who refuse to pledge allegiance to AIM, and some just want to help. What is this place? We call it the Ant Hill. Not my idea. You'll join their cause in the field by working directly with factions like the Inhuman Alliance and S.H.I.E.L.D. agents Dum Dum Dugan, Nick Fury, and more. Earning faction reputation will give you access to new challenges. Hey Avengers, Hill has something she needs your help with. New vendors and more powerful items. Hmm. There will always be new threats on the horizon, so you want to ensure your Avengers are ready for anything. We've talked about a lot today, but that's kind of the point. This is a really big, ambitious game. Marvel's Avengers isn't just a global high stakes race to rebuild the Avengers, to save the Inhumans and uncover the truth about AIM's plans. That's just the beginning. This is a brand new original Avengers single player story that you can enjoy on your own, made the Crystal Dynamics way. But it's also an experience you can play with your friends that will grow as we add new heroes, new regions, and new story, all at no additional cost. Thank you for following us and believing in us. I want to give a big shout out to our community. Thank you for caring and telling us what you think. We're listening, and as fans ourselves, we're all working every day to make Marvel's Avengers worthy of your support. Please stick around after the show to ask questions and chat. On behalf of the whole Marvel's Avengers team, thank you for tuning in to the first Marvel's Avengers the War first. Table. In the coming months, we'll talk about our first post-launch hero, our upcoming beta, and of course, our launch when Marvel's Avengers arrives September 4th. I'm Casey Lynch, and I'll see you next time. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about this. So. I didn't know they were going like the RPG route, and if I did, I don't remember anything about this game. Okay, don't.
Okay, because I, mean, I move on so fast with games that it's like I just forget about things. But I, regardless, I am cool with them going RPG because in the beginning, I, it was stale. Like, I didn't think it was going to do anything. It was like, cool, you got this attack, that attack. You could chin it together and, be, and become a little bit cooler. But knowing that you can go in and have different attacks and then combo those together, I'm pretty sure, and have different things... It just, it adds to it. And then on top of that, you have customizable gear. Yes! Give me all of that. Put it in. I'm ready for it. Give me all of it. I want all of that. So, I'm glad that I'm going the RPG route. I don't know about anybody else. I know a lot of people don't like the whole everything is going RPG and like open world, etc., etc. I, I, I like this stuff. I think it's going to be great. And with someone that likes Marvel a lot, I think this is going to be a great game if they continue uh, to update it, give us free content, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I'm here for it, man. I really am. So if you guys enjoyed the reaction to Marvel's Avengers full war table gameplay event trailer, let this just do everything you too, baby. Like, comment, subscribe, and show your friends. As always, guys, my name is Johnny, and I'll be seeing you guys tomorrow for a lot more stuff. Because we have a lot of content. We have, a, we have so much content coming, it's not even funny. Gonna finish Last of Us 2. We gotta finish Maneater. I'm probably gonna start SpongeBob, SquarePants, uh, frickin' be a Battle of Bikini Bottom rehydrated because that was my childhood, and I at least got though, at least one episode up in there somewhere so at some point. We have all of the new Spider Man coming out Ratchet and Clank, Horizon, uh, Avengers, Cyberpunk. I'm going to say Cyberpunk one more time, and again Cyberpunk, because that's going to be crazy great. I'm just excited. We have so much content coming, so if you're new, please do the YouTube stuff, and I'll see you guys very soon. Bye!